Do you want to learn how to do machine learning directly in your database using simple SQL queries? Do you want to access thousands of state-of-the-art language models and algorithms to process text and tabular data efficiently? In this video, I will show you how to use PostgreSQL, an AI application database that lets you perform natural language processing and classical machine learning tasks with PostgreSQL. I will demonstrate how to build a CMS that automatically translates and extracts keywords from text using PostgreSQL. You will learn how to use pre-trained state-of-the-art ML models to process your data. You will also see how PostgreSQL can turn Postgres into a capable vector database and how to create and use features like embeddings. By the end of this video, you will have an understanding of how PostgreSQL can help you build AI application how you can merge ML and good old Postgres application workloads. I'll even show you how to use the latest LLMs and vector operations. So stay tuned and let's get started. So here we are on the Postgres ML website. You can read through the features and documentation if you'd like, and you can click on the open source link to get to their GitHub repo. You will need to clone this repository as I have done right here. You have to have Docker installed for all this to work. I won't go over that here since there are numbers of videos out there. So when I run Docker Compose up, it will start three services. The database container, which is essentially a Ubuntu container that has the Postgres database itself alongside Python and the Postgres ML extension. It will also start a container with the documentation website, so you can have the latest docs at your fingertips and another container with the dashboard application. The dashboard is something similar to Jupyter Notebooks. So if you use that in the past, well, this is almost the same, but instead of writing Python code, you write SQL. So why would a solution like this exist? For one, having the processing close to your data means that there is less overhead of moving the data around. And another benefit is that you can use other database features such as functions, triggers, take advantage of indexing, and so on. The algorithms can be trained on your own data without complicated data pipelines. You can store the results of the processing back in the database and run the computations on triggers, for example. And of course, this is very useful for anyone who wants to experiment with ML but doesn't have the time to learn Python from scratch and instead just use the SQL syntax that they are familiar with. So as you can see, the dashboard contains some predefined notebooks that take you through some of the features and use cases of Postgres ML. Models are the result of training an algorithm on a dataset and you can group a collection of models into projects. So what can we do with this? In this video, we are creating a hypothetical CMS that will be able to automatically translate content for internationalization. We can generate a summary of an article or we can extract keywords that can be used for SEO. We will also extract something called vector indexes that will transform our text into numerical vectors that capture its meaning. These vectors can then be stored and searched in the database using a special type of index called a vector index. This allows you to find similar or related text in your database based on their vector similarity, rather than just exact keyword matches. This is extremely useful in creating recommendation systems. And we can do all this because PostgreSQL can use state-of-the-art AI models, including GPT-type models from Hugging Face. If you don't know Hugging Face, it is a platform for building and sharing state-of-the-art models and algorithms. I will show you their website and how to use the models a bit later in the video. Let's get started. So here I'm creating a simple table schema. It will contain a title and the text and the keywords of the article in both languages I want to use, English and Spanish. First, I'm adding a few sample articles to work with. They contain the English title and text, and I'm going to use AI to generate translations using the included ML models. The syntax looks like this. PostgreSQL adds a few functions to Postgres that you can execute giving them usually two or three arguments. The first, the name of the model. The second is the input, usually an array or a JSON structure. And some of the models also accept some different options to fine tune the behavior of the model. In this case, I'm using the included English to French translation model. I'm giving it the array of article titles as input. Then I execute this query. As you can see, this takes around three minutes or so, and it didn't even translate the first title. The result came back in the form of a JSON, but Postgres has excellent JSON support, so you can transform that to a table if you'd like. Realistically, I would want this to work in a trigger. However, it is real slow for that. There are some reasons why, and I'll get to them in a minute. But the nice thing about PostgreSQL is that you can bring in other pre-trained models, such as this one from the Helsinki University. And as you can see, the syntax changed a bit, as opposed to the built-in models, where the first argument was a string, the name of the model. Now it's a JSON object. 
This tells PostgreSQL to go download this model from Hugging Face, where you can go and find other models like this. You can see here there are just tons of pre-trained models for different use cases such as classification, translation, conversations, summarization, and many, many more. Initially, when running this SQL query, it will go and download the model, so that will take a bit longer. However, the model will be cached for subsequent executions. As you can see, this model is way faster than the built-in model, and the translation seem more accurate. Speaking of performance, what you need to keep in mind is that I'm running this in a Docker container with no GPU acceleration, so there are many ways to make this faster with specialized hardware. Check out the documentation for more information on this. Next, let's generate a summary of the article. I found this model here that seems to be based on the BART model from Facebook. Speaking of that, make sure to check out the licensing on these models. Not all of them are free for commercial use. Not bad. 140 seconds and we got a summary of all the articles. Next, let's create a recommendation system using vector indexes and something called cosine similarity. So yeah, if you've ever wondered why would anyone care about cosine and geometry, there you have it. If you care about nice things, like efficient algorithms that solve real-world problems, then you care about math and science. First, we need to generate the embeddings. And then, in this query, I'm using the cosine similarity function that is added by the PostgreSQL extension. Feed in the embeddings of the articles I'm comparing to, and then ordering the other articles by their similarity index. And this is extremely fast, as you can see. As a result, the most similar article to the second one is the first one. And that's no surprise, since the first two articles are about AI, and the third and fourth are about cooking. And as you have many more articles, this calculation becomes even more precise. And let's just confirm that the most similar article to the fourth one is the third one. Perfect. And for the last demo, I'm extracting the keywords from each article. However, I found this data a bit harder to work with in SQL, as you need to rely on the start and end position to extract the actual keywords. So what can you do with something like this? Well, one possible implementation would be to use specialized hardware to make this faster and have this run in some triggers to automatically generate keywords and translations and embeddings once an article is added or updated. I only scratched the surface of what you can do with PostgreSQL. You could go further and train models on your own data for your specific use cases. Keep in mind, you do have to understand how Docker works or at least how to create data volumes and persist data or you will lose your data in your notebooks. Also, this is still in beta, so it's experimental. I wouldn't recommend using this in production systems just yet. And there you have it, machine learning with SQL. I hope you found this interesting and maybe you got some ideas about what you could do with something like this. Go on and experiment with it yourself and I'll see you in my next video.